everybody and welcome to Boston, Massachusetts. Today is October 2nd, 2023. It's about a beautiful gorgeous 70 degrees out and it's uh, approximately quarter past 11 a.m. As you can see I'm in uh, Beacon Hill right now. And I'm going by a uh, nursery, I believe, so that's why you're hearing kids screaming. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take a walk through Beacon Hill. You can see the beautiful row houses here. And the first thing we're going to come up on is the Peter Faneuil House, which was formerly the uh, Peter Faneuil School, right over here. This is a four-story brick Tudor Revival building. It was built in 1910 by designs by Boston architects James T. Kelly and Harold S. Graves. It was named for Peter Faneuil, the benefactor who gave Faneuil Hall to the city. Today it provides 48 affordable rental units. Of course, everybody knows Faneuil Hall, and that is uh, named after Peter Faneuil. So we're going to come up on the Museum of African American History, which was the Abiel Smith School. Um, when it was the Ab Abiel Smith School, it was the oldest. Here, hold on a second, across the street. So anyway, the Abiel Smith School was the oldest public school in the United States that was built for the sole purpose of educating African American children. Its walls tell the story of abolition and equal education. And here it is. I'm going to cross over. So, and I can take a better look at the building over here. In 1815, businessman Abiel Smith died and bequeathed $4,000 for the education of African-American children. In Boston, the school committee used some of, some of that uh, donation to construct the Abiel Smith School. See some of these. Take a look back down the hill. Okay, so we're going to continue up Joy Street. Here you can see the sign up there. See more beautiful architecture here. We're crossing over Myrtle Street. So we're going to head up here and take a right on Pinckney Street. Okay, so this beautiful home here is a Charles Middleton house. It was built in 1787. This is one of the oldest standing homes on Beacon Hill. George Middleton, one of the original owners, led the Bucks of America, a local black militia during the American Revolution. Um, after the war, 
He became an activist and community leader, helping found the American African Society and serving the third Grand Master of the Prince Hall Masons. And that is 5 Pinckney Street. You can see this beautiful building next to it as well. You can see I'm trying to walk on the shaded side of the street because it just makes um, using the camera a lot easier. Okay, so down the hill we go. Okay, so up on the corner here is the Phillips School, which I think is now a private residence, but it was built in, it's over here, built in 1824. This former school building originally served as the Boston English High School. It became the Phillips Grammar School in 1844, named after Boston's first mayor, John Phillips. After Massachusetts law from 1855 required school uh, desegregation, Phillips was one of the first integrated schools in Boston. Actually, I'll stay on this side of the street because you can see these buildings from across the street as we go down the hill. Okay, I'm going to cross the street. And this whole area here is called Lewisburg Square, which was named after the Battle of Lewisburg, during which the Massachusetts 
uh, militiamen sacked the French fortress in 1745. The square here was laid out in 1826, and it's just a uh, definitely a stunning place. And you can hear there, you see this park here. It is very beautiful here. And I think they're doing some work over there. Apologies for the construction noise. Let's see how beautiful this place is. Which I'm gonna cross over. Take a look up and uh... Okay, so we're gonna head up Mount Vernon Street here and we're gonna cut to the right and then down the famous Acorn Street. It's gonna be a little bright up here. So Acorn Street is a famous cobblestone street in Beacon Hill neighborhood. It was laid out in the 1820s. And I saw from one source that it was originally called Kitchen Street uh, because the small row houses were once occupied by the cooks and coachmen who lived close to their employers. street is actually famous for having all its original cobblestone here. I guess there aren't many streets like that left in the United States. We'll take a look back up at it. Okay, I'm going to do is cut down to Charles Street. Ah, it's nice to be in the shade again. Okay, so we're on Charles Street now. It's beautiful. If you go down that way, you'd get to the Boston Common and Boston Public Garden. Okay, so apparently Charles Street, the Charles River, and Charlestown, Massachusetts are all named for King Charles I, which is interesting. You 
see there are tons of uh, shops and restaurants to, on this street. That's the Charles Street meeting house on the corner of Mount Vernon there in uh, Charles Street. I'm going to hang a left here down Mount Vernon. Here's a Charles Street Meeting House. It was built in 1807. The Charles Street Meeting House originally served as the home of the Third Baptist Church. Like most Boston churches at the time, um, Third Baptist enforced racially uh, segregated seating. In 1836, Timothy Gilbert, an abolitionist, changed the church's policy by inviting several of his African-American friends to sit at his pew. He was expelled for his actions. Gilbert founded the first Free Baptist Church, also known as a Tremont Temple. This, this building here is called the Sunflower Castle, or the Sunflower House. It's an 1840 home, which was transformed into its present form in 1878 by then owner Charles Luce. Actually, I'm gonna cross the street. We go the first floor is stucco and painted in a bright yellow. The second floor is covered in red English pattern tile. The upper floor window has a carving of a sunflower. I think you can see that. It's really bright towards the sun. Let's see. I think I actually have info. This is no longer, obviously, no longer a fire department. I think it's a uh, community um, for like community activities for the oh it's I think this is the Hill House yeah it's a community center here yeah duh. there's the flag right there See the gourds are out for the fall. I love it. We're coming up on the Church of the Advent. Looks like they're working on it a little bit right now. The Church of the Advent was born in 1844 from the inspiration of a group of Bostonians who desired to establish a new parish that would put into practice the ideals of then 11-year-old Oxford movement. See some of the details here. Let's walk over to the front door.
and you can see if I just keep cutting through, I'll eventually get to the Charles River. There's the Prue. Hey, there's the uh, that shell. If I go this way, you can see the Prue. And that slightly smaller building next to the Prue, to the left, is the Huntington Street building. I always see them as being together. And actually, if you cut down this way, you can see there's a bridge there and we cross over and go over to the Hatchow and the Charles River banks. It is the Arthur Fiedler footbridge. There's a Hancock too, right in front of us. Or 200 Clarendon Street Tower. That's its current name, but most people still know it, know it as the Hancock building. It's a beautiful view. Oh, you can see the state house up there. Oh, you get a, if we cross a bridge, you'll see you get a glimpse of the Sitco sign. Take a look back. You can see the hat shell from up here. Through the trees there. See here, if I look back here, see the Sitco sign. And the Longfellow Bridge behind the hat shell. All right, so we're just about at the Charles River.
Oh, you can see uh, Millennium Tower and I think the Winthrop Tower to the right of it. Uh, so these buildings are peeking up. It might be Millennium Tower, I just forget. Millennium or Millennial. I think it's Millennium Tower. All right, so we're over. In the summers, they do, at least they used to do free concerts here every, I think it was every Wednesday afternoon to early evening, like classical concerts. It was really wonderful. I used to work near here so I would ride my bike up on the Charles every single day after work especially in the summer when it was light out and I'd often stop and take in a concert or yeah, those are some great days oh we got some geese very common on the Charles here Cross the bridge over to the bank of the Charles. You sometimes get really beautiful photos in this inlet here because um, if the wind is calm, this water will get really still sometimes, which it doesn't get quite as still in the main Charles River because it's, it's wider. Here is uh, Arthur Fiedler, musician, of course. I read his history in a previous video, but it escapes me at the moment. See the uh, Jenga building. It's a BU building. I think it's the Data Sciences uh, building, but uh, nicknamed Jenga for obvious reasons. Ah, what a lovely day. Some, uh, a nice Adirondack chairs if you want to chill out, although this one seems to be missing its uh, um, railing. <laughs> Not railing. Holy heck, word escapes me. There's a State Street building there. Or a state building. I don't, I don't think it's actually on State Street. All right, I think I'm gonna call it here, man. This was an incredible walk today. As always, if you enjoyed my video, make sure to hit the like button. If you like my content in general and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And check out my photography at wayneoxfordphotography.com. You can buy prints, mugs, um, shower curtains, cell phone cases, etc of all the photography I've collected in the last decade or so. And uh, it really helps to support my channel. And anyway, thanks for coming along and I will see you next time, bye.